Welcome back everyone to our review of every chapter in Kirby Manga Mania. Last time we finished up Volume 2, so we're going to jump right into Volume 3. But before we do, make sure to check out our merch store in the description below where you can buy our shirts, mugs, and stickers to enrich your gameplay experience. Without further ado, let's get to the review. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 1, The Way of Laughs? The chapter begins with a narrator describing Kirby that although he is a hero, he is also a gag manga protagonist who must meet a quota of one laugh per page. Honestly, that explains a lot. At one point, King Dedede shows up and hears the narrator give Kirby a glowing description, even if it's a bit untrue. King Dedede gets jealous and asks for one, but it's less than flattering. Kirby then shows off a bunch of his signature jokes, like thanking every bit of rice he eats, for example. King Dedede attempts to do a signature joke, but it gets cut for not being funny. The narrator then questions what it means to be a professional at comedy, and Kirby actually kinda gives a profound answer. To me, a professional is someone who can turn everything into a joke even during hard times. This chapter is just a stuff happens chapter. I think the only joke that really got a chuckle out of me was DD's joke being cut. Other than that, not a lot of substance to this one. With all that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 1 gets my rating of a C. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 2, Not Quite Right? A Kirby Blast from the Past. The chapter begins with Kirby going up to his friends and they notice something a little different. Kirby, for some reason, looks exactly like he did in Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy. Everyone starts making fun of Kirby, saying his face does not look cute, when King Dedede pushes him into the castle to get away from prying eyes. He questions why Kirby looks like this, and Kirby speculates that it is because he played Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy for too long. Kirby comes up with the idea that he may turn back to normal if he plays the newest game, Kirby Star Allies. It kinda works, but it makes him look more like modern game Kirby rather than the Kirby from the manga. Kirby then reads a bunch of manga, but unfortunately he read Volume 25, which was apparently the manga where Hikawa was at his worst. They make him read Chapter 14, and now he's back to his normal Kirby manga self. Kirby ends the chapter with commenting on how the Cappies haven't changed design in 25 years. As much as this is a very short, gag-filled chapter, it was really fun seeing the different Kirby designs. Just for that simple little fact, I really like this chapter. Seeing the artist change his art style to match the other Kirby designs and even do a little self-deprecating humor for a time was actually a pretty funny joke. With all of that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 2 gets my rating of an A+. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 3, King Dedede's Hobby Hunt. King Dedede starts talking to us as well as Hikawa through narration about hobbies. King Dedede finds that he doesn't really have a hobby. Kirby shows up and starts saying how he's got tons of hobbies like eating and singing karaoke. King Dedede starts to get upset that he doesn't have a hobby, especially when Koo points out that not having hobbies could lead to Dedede dying alone. They try to get Dedede into reading, but he only likes picture books. Hey, just like in the anime! They suggest movies, but only show him boring ones. They suggest video games, but King Dedede ironically doesn't like video games. And they suggest playing a musical instrument, but Kirby gives him a musical saw. King Dedede gives up on trying to find a hobby of his own, and just tells Kirby to think of one for him. They go through dress-up, shopping sprees, and being nostalgic, but none of them really suit the king. This is when the king realizes he's had a hobby all along. Fighting Kirby Another chapter that's just a vehicle for jokes rather than an actual story. Chapters like these really remind me of newspaper funnies. Slightly entertaining, but never really gets a laugh out of me. I'm really struggling to say anything about this chapter at all, really. With all of that in mind, Volume 3, Chapter 3 gets my rating of a C-. Next up is Volume 3, Chapter 4, Go Get Him, King DDD Musclehead Mania. The chapter begins with everyone being upset that King Dedede is the new star of the manga, even though this is Kirby Manga Mania. King Dedede, in all of his excitement, accidentally throws out his back. He tries to get up regardless, but Kirby just hurts him more so he can. This results in- uh, 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 next up is Volume 3, Chapter 4, Miracle Poppy Back with a Bang. Poppy shows his stuff now that he's the star, being able to throw millions of bombs at once. 
Someone questions his hero status and, oh, Jesus Christ. Next up is Volume 3, Chapter 4. Masked Swordsman Meta Knight, The Legend Begins. A whole fan club gathers around Meta Knight, but this doesn't stop the chapter from devolving into an all-out brawl over who gets the main character role. They fight for so long, the chapter ends and we get a tease of an all-new manga, Waddle D World. This was another fun one like the Kirby Face one a couple of chapters ago, mostly because I just like seeing all the cover page mockups for other mangas based on the Kirby franchise. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd totally read a Meta Knight manga. Hell, I'd even read a King Dedede manga. Sorry, Poppy. Another fun short chapter. We've been getting a lot of short chapters lately. With all of that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 4 gets my rating of an A-. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 5, Budding Ego, Everyone's Idol Kirby. The chapter starts with Kirby realizing that he's an international superstar. Koo then says something which makes me question what this universe is. Koo points out that Game Kirby is really popular. Are Game Kirby and this Kirby two different people? I guess they've kind of implied it before. Either way, this makes Kirby come to the conclusion that he has to act more like an idol star. He starts lying about himself, saying he's from Planet Apple Star, and that he exercises and eats healthy every day to stay in shape. Then he details the new way he's going to get copy abilities. He establishes a friendship and charms the enemy before inhaling them and getting their ability. This method makes it so everyone wants to get inhaled by Kirby. He then goes to unveil a new copy ability, Flower Kirby, which is just Kirby wearing spring clothing. Kirby then hears that we, yes, the reader, want to be inhaled by him too. So we get inhaled by Kirby, and I don't know what it is about this texture that represents the inside of Kirby, but it makes me uncomfortable. Is this for? It's not great. Kirby then asks us how it was in his mouth. Never. Ask me that again. Koo then points out that Kirby hasn't said Peepo once in this entire chapter. I haven't really made it clear through my narration, but my visuals probably showed you that Kirby has a vocal tick where he says Peepo a lot. They take this as completely denying who he is at his core as Kirby ends out the chapter. King DDD hoping he returns to normal by the next chapter. Once again, this is another Stuff Happens chapter. Kirby decides to become more like a corporate Japanese idol star, and they run with that. Damn, missed opportunity to really show the dark side of being an idol. Your management controlling your whole life, dictating if you're allowed to date or not, starving you to control your weight. Man, I wish Kirby covered that. I'm joking, of course, I don't, I don't want that. The chapter just abruptly ends too, which I'm starting to get a little sick of. With all of that in mind, Volume 3, Chapter 5 gets my rating of... A C minus. Next up is Volume 3, Chapter 6, Waddle D's Woes? I guess we are getting that Waddle D manga. This chapter starts with a Waddle D realizing just how many of his kind there are. This drives him to want to rise the ranks and become a unique Waddle D, to become a boss character. And King DDD reveals that each Waddle D goes through a rigorous training process in order to get the role of Waddle D they are. Waddle D tries out different abilities, but they just end up being copies of Poppy and King Dedede. Kirby tries to get him to think of what special talents he has, but he can't think of anything and gets depressed. Waddle D points out that all Kirby does is copy abilities, which sends Kirby into his own depression. Kirby and Waddle D both realize that they have a passion for eating, so they keep eating and eating and eating and eating. Through all the eating, the Waddle D became a chunky Waddle D, making him more unique. Until he realizes that big Waddle Dees already exist. Oh well. I feel like that out of all of the short, gag-filled chapters we've been going over, this one is a little bit better since it's not centered around Kirby or DDD. It's centered around a side character like Waddle D. That, and I think I'm realizing that I don't like it when a character's gags all center around unintentionally annoying another character. I definitely like it better when it's in service to helping a character grow, even if it's as little as how it is in this manga. Watching Waddle D try new things was fun. With all of that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 6 gets my rating of an A-. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 7, Everyone is Friends and Star Allies? We're getting a good amount of Kirby Star Allies references in this volume. Neat. The chapter starts with Kirby showing off that he is going on an all-new adventure in Kirby's Star Allies. 
He then shows off the function of the Friend Heart, that he can throw it at his enemies and become instant friends. Kirby ends up having Poppy, Burning Leo, and Waddle Do join his party in order to adventure. Kirby even uses Burning Leo to get the Sizzle Sword, which he then uses to chop and cook at the same time. We even see the Friend Platforms and Friend Wheel ability as well. King DDD then appears, showing how he looks in Kirby Star Allies. Big and buffy and meaty. Kirby asks how he did that, and he reveals that it was because he stuck with a workout routine. Dude doesn't want to talk about the Jamba Hearts, huh? Kirby and his friends beat the crap out of him until there's not much muscle left. Kirby decides to be friends with DDD, so he'll join his team, giving him a chocolate heart. King DDD agrees, and immediately regrets it when he becomes Kirby's mighty steed. Another shorty chapter, but I don't know. This was a fun commercial for Kirby Star Allies. For one thing, I don't mind the gag-filled contents of this chapter because a lot of them are just fun subversions of the actual game mechanics in Kirby Star Allies. It was pretty funny seeing how this gag manga would turn the gameplay mechanics of Kirby Star Allies on its head. Second, it's really cool when the manga makes a direct reference to the games like this. I hope there's more chapters like this in the future. With all that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 7 gets my rating of an A. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 8. Get your grumbles out! The chapter begins with Kirby finding Poppy seemingly upset. Poppy starts venting about how the king has been in such a sour mood lately, and that he's taking it out on him. Poppy then shouts that he's not his slave out of anger, but then gets embarrassed after he does. Kirby says that it's better if Poppy just gets it out of his system, but he's worried someone will hear. Kirby then puts Poppy in his mouth since his mouth is soundproof. Poppy shouts all he wants in there and comes out a new man. The news spreads very quickly, and very soon, everyone wants to shout their frustrations into Kirby's mouth. King DDD shows up to see what the commotion is about, and Kirby tells him. King DDD says he doesn't need to do it because he could just say it to his face. Kirby then starts to feel something bubbling up from inside of him, and everything that was shouted within him comes bursting out of Kirby. One of the things is so bad it just gets bleeped out entirely. Kirby then decides that he wants to try shouting frustrations into someone's mouth. So he goes inside of King Dedede's and shouts his frustrations about going on a meat bun diet. He shouts so hard, King Dedede's eyes pop right out of the sockets, leaving King Dedede writhing in pain. We're really sticking to the shorty boys this time. This one just kind of felt like a worse retread of the one about Gooey being stuck on King Dedede. The fact that there's things a character doesn't want others to hear, and then at the end they all get blurted out, is the same as Gooey saying all of King Dedede's thoughts. That chapter had dark matter. This chapter did not. With all that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 8 gets my rating of a C. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 9, Scorching Summer Battle? Kirby vs. Burning Leo. The chapter begins on a scorching hot summer day. King DDD is so hot, he becomes an analog horror character. If I had a nickel for every time King DDD became an analog horror character, I'd have two nickels. I did this joke before. King DDD then finds Kirby and his friends cooling off all over the castle. Kirby is in the air conditioner, Rick is in the fridge, Koo is using all of the fans, and Kine is taking a bath. King DDD starts dying from all the heat as Burning Leo shows up to chat on all these virgins. Everyone's complaining gets Burning Leo so mad, he explodes more flames making it even hotter. Burning Leo then says he's going to make everybody exercise. DDD tries to stop them, but Burning Leo gets mad, whipping DDD into line. Kirby decides to roast a sweet potato on Burning Leo, which, for some reason, impresses Burning Leo. This leads to a bunch of gags about Kirby and Burning Leo making things hotter and hotter and hotter. King DDD gets so tired of the heat that he begs Kirby to inhale Burning Leo. King DDD feels bad for doing this to Burning Leo, not knowing that Kirby has now become Fire Kirby, who is now acting like Burning Leo. King DDD makes Kirby spit out Burning Leo, which just doubles the problem. After learning that Kirby is hotter than Burning Leo, they start getting into a competition to make things hotter and hotter and hotter. The chapter ends with Kirby winning the competition and everyone else dying. I know I have been commenting on how much the previous chapters have been very short, but this one was way too long. The gags about making things hotter wasn't that funny to have so much dedicated to it. It was just kind of boring and felt dragged out. The only funny frame of the chapter was the final one where everyone's just dead. With all of that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 9 gets my rating of a D.
Next up is Volume 3, Chapter 10. Kirby beats the bad lord with ninja skills. In an alternate dimension where the Kirby characters are back in Edo, Japan, our characters Kirby, Rick, Ku, and Kine stop the Lord's lackeys from stealing food from the townspeople. The four ninjas make their way towards the castle to confront the bad lord DDD using their different ninja techniques. Kirby then comes up on King DDD's own personal ninja guard, Biospark. Kirby fakes everyone out by using a substitution technique, and Kirby retaliates by completely decimating every single muscle and bone in the man's body. Kirby finally confronts DDD and starts using a quick-moving doubling technique. King DDD tries to keep up, but Kirby replaces all of his doubles with bomb dolls. Kirby places so many bombs, however, that not only does he obliterate the castle, but the entire town. Well, I guess that's a victory. This chapter gets points for being an actual story. We haven't gotten one of those in quite a while. Unfortunately, the chapter just isn't that funny. We haven't quite hit that balance yet, but the chapter isn't boring, so I'll give it that. I'm glad I'm not the only one who finds the name Biospark for the ninja character weird. With all of that in mind, Volume 3, Chapter 10 gets my rating of a B-. Next up is Volume 3, Chapter 11, Sleepover at King DDD's. The chapter begins with Kirby, King DDD, and the others playing Kick the Can. Everyone seems to be having a good time other than King DDD, as usual. All of a sudden, it starts pouring rain, forcing everyone inside. According to the weather, the rain is supposed to continue until the next morning, making everyone have to stay the night at the castle. King DDD tries to get everyone to get to sleep, but of course, Kirby makes that difficult, making everyone laugh by singing the fart song. King DDD gets so worked up over everybody that he ends up not being able to sleep after everyone else is. Well, except for Kirby. Kirby keeps King DDD up by being annoying as usual, but eventually Kirby does go to bed. At this point, King DDD can't sleep at all and gets very jumpy at everything. Finally, King DDD starts to go to sleep, but as he's sleeping, he starts to feel extremely warm and finds difficulty breathing. Turns out, Kirby is sleep eating King DDD. Why is everyone friends with Kirby? Even while Kirby is sleeping, he's causing things that make it impossible for DDD to sleep. King DDD starts to count sheep, but realizes he's actually counting townspeople walking out of Kirby's mouth. I repeat, why do people in this manga like Kirby? The king ends up going to the bathroom, and Kirby wakes up. He asks Kine to give him a light so that he could go potty too. When DDD sees Kine, he- JESUS CHRIST! King DDD understandably runs away, being too scared to go to the bathroom for the rest of the night, causing him to wet the bed, ending the chapter. Yet another King DDD torture porn. You could probably tell by the tone while recounting the story that I'm getting a little pooped with this formula. Every character is starting to all seem the same with a different coat of paint. It kind of reminds me of those episodes of Spongebob where Spongebob and Patrick just torture Squidward for absolutely no reason when Squidward is just trying to live his life. It's not very fun to watch and it's not very fun to read either. My question of why they are friends with Kirby is kind of genuine. With all of that in mind, Volume 3, Chapter 11 gets my rating of a D. Next up is Volume 3, Chapter 12. Lots of DDDs? The chapter begins with Adeline showing King DDD a portrait that she drew of him, combining King DDD with that of her ideal king. The sketch of King DDD comes to life and starts being the kingly king that he looks like. Adeline reveals that everything she draws leaps off of the page and comes to life. This is when we see just how much Adeline doodles King DDD, causing a bunch of King DDD doppelgangers to come to life. Even Poppy mistakes the real DDD as one of the copies. King DDD gets upset and demands that Adeline erase them, which instill the fear of God into the drawings as they run away. The doodles start making friends with the denizens of Dreamland, making everyone like them better than the real DDD. Everyone even wants the ideal King version of DDD to replace the original as King of Dreamland. The Doodles then gang up on the King as he screams at Adeline for help. She tries to get them back into the canvas, but they just start a giant fight. Adeline escapes as Kirby says that he wants her to draw him too. Adeline then gets the idea that the only way to stop a bunch of DDDs is to pit them against a bunch of Kirbys. This does solve the DDD problem, but causes an even worse problem of having like 10 Kirbys eating everything in Dreamland. This chapter is a bit better than what we've been getting. I actually like when the manga focuses on characters besides Kirby and DDD because when it does, it doesn't devolve into the same types of gags. Adeline's cute bluntness is honestly pretty funny. 
She knew that her drawings came to life and even then just doodled all the DDDs. The Kirby's ending was pretty entertaining too. With all that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 12 gets my rating of an A-. Next up is Volume 3 Chapter 13, breaking a Guinness World Record with disposable chopsticks. The chapter begins with King Dedede going into the cafeteria within the castle to eat with all of his loyal subjects for a change. King Dedede sees a suspicious figure outside and deems it to be Kirby. He stops him before he can mooch off of everyone, but it turns out that it's not Kirby at all. In fact, Kirby's already inside mooching. The guy reveals that he is actually a judge for the Guinness Book of World Records named Benny. He is there because someone in the castle is very, very close to breaking a world record. After a bit of trying to guess who it is, Benny reveals it to be Karori. He is about to win the world record for most disposable chopsticks split perfectly in half in a row. He's only 8 more chopsticks away from beating the record of 23,591. News starts to spread fast through Dreamland thanks to Kirby, and soon Karori becomes the most famous person in Dreamland in a matter of panels. Karori ends up showing his skill in front of the whole town, impressing everybody and becoming even more famous. It comes down to the wire. They are going to the ramen place to split the last pair of chopsticks Karori needs in order to break the record. Of course, being the last one with the whole thing being televised for everyone in Dreamland to see, he starts to feel very nervous. No, not Karori. He's doing relatively okay. Kirby is the one who feels very nervous, really beating on the pressure. Karori goes to do it, but because Kirby sneezes as he's about to, he screws it up, making him tie with the world record. Karori doesn't seem to mind too much seeing this as an opportunity to try and beat more records. Karori goes on to live his life as King DDD punishes Kirby by starving him. This chapter was a bit more enjoyable, though the ending of Karori screwing up the last one was predictable as hell. I called it in my brain the moment they brought the world record plot into the forefront. Even then though, it was a nice journey seeing that how big the situation got so quickly. Though there weren't any standout jokes in this chapter either, it makes up for it with its writing not making Kirby the overly annoying character he can be sometimes. With all that in mind, Volume 3 Chapter 13 gets my rating of a B. That is the end of Volume 3. But before we end the video and move on to Volume 4 next time, we have another presentation by the amazing crew over at Dubasses. He worked while going to school. With the money he saved up, he started a business. We've got the best prices around! Step on up, folks! He became the CEO of a major corporation with a thousand employees and hit it big. I made a bundle! That ain't right! It's so chilly, Pepper, outside! Yeah, so cute! I'm eating tofu, tofu night! Morsels for my muscles! <laughs> uh, why? How are my old man gags any different than his? Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe to see more videos like this one, and hit that bell to never miss an upload. Don't forget to join us every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for our live streams, where we will be playing the following games on screen. If you want to talk to me directly about the Kirby manga, that's the place to do it. I'd like to give a special shout out to Andrews Retro Games, DMNT, and Giga Gamer. Thank you for being the most well-esteemed guests of them all. If you want a shout out in every video, as well as early access to all of our videos, hit that join button to become a channel member. In the description, we also have merch like our mugs, shirts, and stickers that will power up your gameplay experience. With all that in mind, I'm Bottles, and I bid you my well-esteemed guests, adieu.